स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Welcome students this uh, video lecture we are going to talk about uh, the wave equation in two dimension so wave equation in two dimension so as i told you in the in the last lecture we have seen how to solve the wave equation in two dimension so let me write down the equation it is essentially the so this is called the D L M bar T N. You guys already know that, right? Uh, we did this thing. So D L M bar T N of U uh, that is defined by U T T minus Laplacian of U. Yeah. So this Laplacian that is in two dimension. That is why the wave equation is two dimension. So the problem which we want to solve today, this is zero. Okay. In R two times zero infinity. Clear. Yeah. and what does you do on the bound uh, this thing initial uh, the base t equals to 0 u at the point um, x comma 0 let's say that is equals to some g of x and u uh, with respect to t at the point x comma 0 that is going to be h of x right so this is for our uh, x in r2 and of course t equals to 0 that that is given to you right so u and uh, u u and ut is given like this and of course uh, i mean u satisfies the uh, you know wave equation in the interior of the domain now the question which we want to discuss is this we would like to um, find an explicit so the our aim is this exactly like n equals to 3 aim is to find an explicit solution explicit solution solution u okay in terms of in terms of g and h okay in terms of g and h whatever we did uh, initially you know for the three, three dimensional case we are going to do it for a two dimensional case the exact same i'm i'm mean, not the exact same thing we are doing i mean uh, what i meant is uh, you know the exact same kind of uh, um, i mean uh, goal we have okay so we want to find an explicit solution now if you remember in two dimensional case we define uh, in three dimensional case we define the uh, you know u uh, u uh, which is by a spherical mean and then you define u delta which is like uh, t times u and all uh, i mean r times sorry r times u and all okay so all of those uh, we define and after that we have deduced the uh, karshoff formula right okay mm, but uh, here we are not going to do something like that because it won't work here okay it won't work here so what will happen uh, so um, we are going to use something called a hadamard's hadamard's method of descent okay Uh, okay so basically we are going down so initial so uh, i mean as the name suggests you, you realize what we are trying to do here what we will do is first thing first we, we will think of this problem in r3 do you understand so here you see u uh, i mean if you u depends on x1 x2 and t right this u this u i mean for this problem let's say that problem is 1 the u depends on u x1 x2 x3 now you can think of this as a function in r3 cross 0 infinity so basically u tilde let's say it is like x1 x2 x3 t and you define it like uh, i mean in such a way that it is independent of the third variable so basically u x1 x2 and t is this clear do you understand what i'm saying 
see uh, i mean here in our case in one the u depending depends on two spatial variable uh, of, of course time variable is there that's uh, i mean you can't do anything about it but the thing is the spatial variable are two variables x1 and x2 now what we are doing but in the, we know how to work with wave equation in three dimension yes what we are doing now is we are defining a new u tilde which is like x1 x2 x3 so it depends on three different variables and the, of course the time that we are defining a, as a u which is independent of x3 is it clear so basically you know uh, i mean we are defining it we, we are defining a three dimensional function i mean of course the time i am not uh, I mean, ignoring right now, okay, the three dimensional function in terms of a two dimensional function, clear, okay, and then what happens is um, uh, you write a formula for uh, three dimensional uh, wave equation and then uh, you know, you know, you go down, you descend to two dimension like this, okay. So, so let us, uh, I mean, uh, start with the thing, okay, so assuming. Of course, you see, I don't know whether there is a solution or not. We are assuming that there is a solution, okay? So, assuming, assuming u which is in C2 of R2 times 0 infinity, clear? So, let's say this solves 1, okay? This solves 1 what i will do is i will write it like this okay now set set u tilde exactly what we just dis i mean discussed x1 x2 x3 and t this i am going to set it to be u of x1 x2 t okay what am I doing? Again, let me explain to you. See, I am assuming that there is a solution of 1. If there is a solution of 1, it will look like that. This, right? U of x1, x2, t. So, this is some particular number. Uh, I mean, for a fixed x1, x2, t, there is a fixed uh, number. So, now I am defining a new function, u tilde of x1, x2, x3, t. Yeah, 3, three special dimension, which is independent of the third variable. So, basically, that will be um, defined as the value which u takes at x1, x2, t. Okay, so what is u tilde at x1, x2, x3 and t? That is the exact same value what u takes at x1, x2 and t. That is what we are doing. So you said this. Now once you do that, then, then from 1, okay, I think, uh, I mean, we do not have to worry about it. I mean, I can safely write this thing here. Yeah? u tilde t, t minus Laplacian of u tilde that is equals to 0 in R3 cross 0 infinity. Clear? Yes, that is true. And what is U tilde? This is equals to G tilde and UT tilde is equals to H tilde on R3 cross T equals to 0 right where where what is g tilde again the same thing yeah? g tilde of x1 x2 x3 we are going to define it as g of x1 x2 and h tilde of x1 x2 x3 i am going to define it as h of x1 x2 See, here in our initial case, we were given what G and H is, right? Okay. So, here, of course, this X is X1, X2. You do realize that X is in R2, right? So, X, I am writing it. So, here, X is, is like, like X1 and X2. Clear? Okay. But now, what I am doing here is, I, I mean, this G and H is given. I am using that G and H. Okay. So, to define a new G tilde and H tilde. Okay, and of course, the, if you define u tilde, g tilde, and h tilde like this, then this is true. Okay, let's call it one, uh, two. Clear? So this is true. Okay, now if this is true, see, for, this is in three dimension. I know from our, in, uh, I mean, you know, last video which we did, Kirchhoff formula. What is the solution of this thing? So we'll write that down. Huh? So from Kirchhoff formula. Okay, so um, from uh, Kirchhoff's formula 
okay what do we have we have u of xt clear u of xt that is given by i will i will write it like this u tel u tilde of x tilde comma t okay where so basically okay let me write here x tilde i will write it as x1 x2 and 0 and x is x1 x2 x is x1 x2 i have already written x tilde i will write it as x1 x2 0 so basically you know i will just take that third variable to be 0 okay so u of xt is u tilde of x tilde t tilde clear yeah? sorry not t tilde t t is the t t is t yeah? so that now by Cauchy formula what do you have you have something like this right it is del del t of t the average of del b let me write it like this delta x tilde I will, I will explain here uh, so this is uh, this is just a Cauchy formula huh? s delta plus t times let me write it and then I will explain uh, del b bar x tilde t h tilde ds okay so here see what is b tilde here b tilde is the ball in r3 with center x tilde okay so where b tilde okay uh, x tilde t is the ball in r3 because we are doing it in three dimension right ball with r3 with center x tilde with center x tilde and t positive clear i mean the, i think this is very clear to you this is from the Cauchy formula right uh, g tilde h tilde is because i mean you know we we have this the uh, i mean u restricted at t equals to 0 is g tilde h tilde so i am just writing it down plain and simple okay right and of course what is d s sorry the here it is d s tilde okay and uh, uh, of course uh, okay uh, let me write it here d s tilde okay this denotes the this is very important okay this denotes the two dimensional two dimensional okay surface measure surface uh, area you can say okay the unit surface area on del b tilde x tilde t clear okay see now why am i not writing del b del b you see since i am doing it in two dimension i want my b uh, to be you know the i mean we denote you know, ball with b right so I want my ball to be in art two dimension, right? So that is why this B is reserved for two dimension. Whenever I am writing B tilde, it is for three dimension. Clear? Yeah? Okay. So del B tilde is basically the sphere, you know, the surface. Uh, I mean, you know, the surface. Okay. So that is del B tilde. Okay. A B tilde is whatever is inside, of course, in two three dimension. It's in three dimension. Okay. In three dimension. okay so let us do this part first of all i want to calculate what this is yeah so in the surface measure of del b tilde okay x tilde t g tilde d s tilde okay what is this so now uh, okay uh, first thing first let me let us break it up it is 1 by 4 pi Mm, t square of course right because you know the the surface uh, area of the ball in three dimension is this 1 by 4 p t, pi t square and then you have del b tilde of x tilde comma t g tilde d s tilde clear that is fine okay now what i am going to do is this see this g tilde is independent of the third variable see what am i saying you see x tilde is independent of third variable right it is independent of third variable x tilde okay so g tilde this depend this g tilde of x right okay so first of all what i will do is i will just you know 
write it down in uh, how can i say i mean uh, let me let me put it in uh, surface uh, this thing uh, integral formula and then i will do it okay so uh, see here what am i doing is this this is on the surface of the sphere del b delta x delta t right so you can if you can think of it something like this sphere right A surface of sphere a small unit uh, part of this i mean forgive my drawing i am not very, very good at it but anyway so uh, this is a part of a sphere okay a small unit part like let's say del b delta um, small part in three dimension sphere huh? now you see what i will do is um, i mean of course this sphere uh, i mean for z uh, x3 equals to 0 okay for x3 so this is x1 x2 x3 x1 x2 x3 so for x3 equals to 0 so basically this uh, the hemisphere okay this is some part okay i hope this you understand my drawing okay so the base is x3 equals to 0 so this is for x3 equals to 0 okay now you see uh, if you project it on this the um, i mean on this part x3 equals to 0 here if you project it okay it will be corresponding to some some uh, kind of uh, rectangle or some some um, region here in let's say d capital okay so you understand what i'm trying to say okay this is the surfaces the small surfaces and corresponding to that this d is there okay if you project it in this two dimension okay so what is the formula let's say this surface s so uh, let me write it uh, maybe i don't know how where, where. maybe i can write it here yeah maybe i can do it here so uh, um, I think you guys know this thing, but still, uh, let me write it. Yeah. So the surface integral. Um, so let's say uh, let the surface let the surface is given by is given by z equals to. Uh, I mean something. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's say p of x y p of x y some function of x and y so basically uh, i mean uh, it's a graph of some function huh? uh, sorry uh, z equals to p of x y yeah so, uh, i mean uh, let's say you have the surface which looks like z equals to p of x y okay so then uh, the surface integral then the surface integral is given by so you see if the surface is given by the graph of this function z equals to p of x y so graph of p okay then the surface integral if you want of some integ function f let's say integ double integral over s f of x y uh, z d s okay i am taking x1 x2 x3 so let me write it like x1 x2 x3 it will be otherwise you may get confused okay let me write it like that so f of x1 x2 x3 okay so this is your s this is your s and that's your d right so x1 x2 x3 with respect to ds yes yeah, surface uh, this thing this is double integral over d d is the region here okay f of x1 x2 and x3 is getting replaced by p of x y clear p of x y so here also i have to change this uh, let me write it like this x3 is p of x1 x2 let's say that's your surface okay yeah, so x c is given by p of x1 x2 the graph of some function p and then uh, i mean you can write it like this and uh, of course you have due to this change of variable you have this uh, you know uh, the, 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 the 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 scaling yeah so that is given by uh, p x square plus p y square plus 1 okay and then you have the area element da right okay so da is basically you know dx1 dx2 dx3 that sort of thing yeah okay now 
so essentially you see i have this is this is the integral which i have here okay so now i want to change it to the base okay here this is del b tilde x tilde t so you see for us okay for us this g tilde okay if you if you think about it this g tilde is independent of the third variable right yes or no i mean you, uh, just think about it for a moment if you want you can pause the video think about it what i am saying that uh, you see that g tilde does not depend on y3 right so uh, since let me write it like this g tilde does not depend on y y y3 okay it does not depends on y3 okay so now of course what is y so this is with respect to y okay ds y tilde so i'm not writing all that i i, I hope you guys uh, understood okay uh, this i'm not writing so see y is here so y is with respect to you know y is on the boundary of the ball okay so i'm not writing all that uh, i mean that is fine so y is y1 y2 y3 then, huh? so g tilde does not depends on y3 clear okay so if it does not depends on y3 then because you see g tilde x1 x2 x3 so i mean if you replace it by y1 y2 y3 so basically that is independent of the third variable okay so the g tilde does not depends on y3 okay if it does not depends on y3 then this integral okay so basically you see the, this particular thing you can break it up into two hemisphere the uh, upper hemisphere and the lower hemisphere yes you can break it up into two hemispheres okay so from three what i can write is this i will write it as two times this particular term integral it's not on the boundary of del b delta but now it will be on the base for x3 equals to 0 okay so let me write it from 3 uh, from 3 from 3 we have we have uh, then del b delta x tilde t okay g tilde ds tilde okay i mean if you want you can write it as y but i mean that is given yeah if you want you write, write it as g tilde of y ds tilde i am not writing all that okay that's fine so this is given by okay uh, so 2 by 4 pi t square why 2 is coming because of the two upper half one half and other half g tilde is independent of y3 so basically you, you, in both half it's in i mean you know its contribution is same okay so it is 2 by 4 pi t square integral over the ball b x t yeah i can write it like this see uh, I mean here S is getting converted to D, D is this region, huh? this is the whole region, S is the surface uh, here, okay. So if del B x tilde T, okay, when you are working with this thing, where will it convert? It will convert to the, you, you know, this, this, this whole thing, the, the base uh, for x3 cos is the whole thing inside, whatever is inside, right, okay. So that is why it becomes B of x3 okay and uh, of course you have uh, g of y okay and then this calculation is there p x square plus p y okay. uh, I, I, I wrote it in a sorry this is a confusing thing yeah i'm let me write it like this p of x1 x2 p of x2 square clear okay sorry i mean there are a lot of variables involved right so i'm uh, i mean just to, for to make all of this you know more precise that is why this confusion is happening okay i hope this is fine yes okay so you see the, this particular term the uh, the scaling term px is one uh, square plus px2 square plus one in our place what is the i mean uh, the graph of the function so basically that is given by t square minus uh, equals to 
uh, I mean you know the the boundary t square equals to x minus y square right okay so basically now if you calculate it uh, calculate this thing so please do it yourself mm, you get a extra term the what is the extra term the extra term is 1 plus gradient um, how do I put it gamma y square whole power half dy clear where gamma of y is equals to t square minus y minus x square whole power half okay for y in b x t clear okay i mean the, i'm just writing the surface this is the surface of the sphere here this p is getting replaced with the surface of the sphere and then i am just calculating p x square plus p y square so this is gradient of p square uh, gradient of p square plus one you see this is what i calculated okay whole power half okay so that is what i just calculated and just wrote it there i mean, I mean nothing special huh? and uh, of course again y2 is coming because um, you know it consists of uh, the two hemispheres right so just to accommodate that uh, we have this now since now you see since 1 plus gradient gamma um, y the square of that okay whole power half huh? that if you calculate it it is t times t square minus y minus x square whole power minus half clear okay i mean you, of course you can check this part but there is nothing to check i mean this is uh, just a calculation okay i mean uh, nothing much is there so therefore what we have is uh, the um, average of g tilde on this b tilde x tilde t g tilde okay ds tilde this is given by 1 by 2 pi t right because you know that is going can getting cancelled and this t and this t square is getting cancelled and you have b of x t g of y by t square minus y minus x square whole power half dy clear i mean just uh, you know you just put uh, the values of this in here and that is what we are going to get right i mean this this thing i'm just putting it here okay now if you do that then now what happens is uh, this you know so if you if you if i write it like you know the uh, how can i say uh, the average huh? then it will happen that it will become t by 2 because you know the volume of the ball will be included so it get um, sometimes get cancelled out and it will become t by 2 and then the average of b x t okay g of y by t square minus y minus x square whole power half dy clear whole power half dy now you see hence therefore what do you have u of xt how does it look like u of xt you remember this formula right so this is this uh, g tilde integral the average of g tilde is this yes and uh, um, u of xt is given like this u of xt is this so i will just put that average of g tilde in here okay and then uh, the, what i have is u of xt is half of del del t clear of t square because already one t is there and this t part is there so t square okay t square this half is coming from here this this t by 2 that's why this half is there okay t square and uh, uh, yeah the average of b x t uh, where is it yeah g of y by t square minus y minus x whole power sorry square whole power half okay dy so fine plus t square by 2 
bx is the h part. Huh? So, this is h of y by t square. How is this coming? You know, the exact same thing. Yeah, though, so th this I am skipping this part. Okay, uh, t square minus y minus x square whole power half. Okay, d of y. How this is coming uh, again? Uh, the same exact same sort of procedure will work here. Yes. Okay. Uh, so I mean, you just replace g tilde with h tilde, and the same thing happens. Okay. Now, see this t square. The average on b x t of g of y by t square minus mod y minus x square whole power half okay this dy if you if you change the variable here this will look like t times v01 okay you remember the change of variable which we always use tz by 1 minus mod z square whole power half dz clear and so what do you have we have this one this calculation del del t so i have to calculate this del del t right of t square v x t g y by t square minus y minus x square whole power half dy clear this is equals to the average on b01 g of x plus tz clear by 1 minus mod z square whole power half i am just writing whatever is there eh? i mean i am not uh, uh, the exact same thing i am just writing dz plus t times from here uh, sorry not from here from here t times b the boundary uh, sorry the ball b01 gradient g of x plus tz dot z by 1 minus mod z square whole power half d z yes i hope this is clear i mean i'm j i'm not doing anything except that you know i'm just calculating the derivative that's it. Yes. so i'm just calculating the derivative i'm just putting it there and writing it down right so I hope that I, mean, I hope I do not have to explain you this particular. Um, I mean, this is trivial. Yes, uh, just do the Lipschitz formula thing and it's done. So this is given by t times b x t. Okay, g of y by t square minus y minus x square. So I will just write it uh, together properly. Yeah? d of y plus t times integral b x t okay gradient of g y dot y minus x y t square minus y minus x square whole power half d y okay I mean you just put everything together in terms of y and x okay now we are at the end of the formula but I mean we have to go through it therefore what is u of x t now let us write down what the entire the ultimate formula is this is half okay so I'm, I'm I'm not I'm just putting everything together yes I'm not calculating because it will become more big huh? so let me put everything together uh, so if you are not convinced please do it yourself i mean there is nothing to do you you have this thing you just put it together with this h that's all okay and uh, so this is t g of y plus t square 
h of y plus t gradient g of y dot y minus x by t square minus y minus x square whole power half dy clear so this holds for x in r2 and t of course positive clear this formula so let's call it a star star is called the poiseau formula formula for the solution of one in two dimension clear okay so see uh, i mean so let me explain to you what we did again i mean again see i know how to work with three dimensional wave equation right that we know huh? so three dimensional wave equation last class we did there is a karshaw formula which actually deals with three dimensional wave equation two dimensional wave equation what we are doing is we are writing this pro i mean we are writing uh, we are taking uh, defining a new function which is a three dimensional function of course uh, uh, for a fixed time three dimensional function and that is defined by this two dimensional u this is of course assuming that there is a solution u okay now now how do you know that there is a solution of course there is a solution that is quasi kowalski theorem okay but uh, i mean we are not going to delve into that for now uh, let us assume that there is a solution if there is a solution it will look like what that is what our question is so u tilde is given by u now this is hadamard's method of descent so we are using this trick this trick of going from n equals to 3 to 2 so once you use that trick okay uh, you write this equation in terms of terms of u tilde the equation 2 okay you know what is the formula for equation 2 the formula is given by this yes once you know this thing what you do is you just calculate what t times g tilde ds is okay for that you need some surface integral use the surface integral write down what this uh, in particular thing is that uh, what is the average of g tilde that is this and once you do that you have u of xt which will look like this if you put it in that formula right now you do not have to do anything but just calculate what is del del t of t square uh, the average this this particular thing you just have to calculate once we calculate this thing put everything together and you have u of xt so it is not very difficult it's just a tedious uh, calculations okay now okay so this is fine this is what we called a poiseau so please remember that the other formula for n equals to 3 so for n equals to 3 it is called the karshoff formula karshoff formula and for n equals to 2 it's called the poiseau formula okay now we are going to use similar thing for higher dimension but that will do it in next week clear so after this what we are going to do is so uh, here we did the homogeneous problem right so now what we will do is the inhomogeneous problem the the new section is the inhomogeneous Cauchy problem, right? So, what is the inhomogeneous Cauchy problem? It is basically the DLM Bertian of U is given by capital F. Yes. Uh, so, let us call it a, I do not know, maybe up till here, what did we say? Uh, it is 3 right let us call it a 4 ok uh, this is the problem given to us and of course uh, you have this the boundary condi I mean the initial condition is there u is equals to g and u tilde is equals to h yeah the, those boundary conditions are there in whatever the region is yeah uh, I mean uh, see now i will assume that i know what to we how to handle the homogeneous problem in any dimension 
although I don't know that I know only for n equals to 3 and n equals to 2 higher dimension we will do because that is very very complicated higher dimension okay we will do in the next class but for now uh, I will just assume that let's let's assume that we know this yeah but at least I mean you can of course assume that n equals to 2 and 3 we already know yeah 1 2 3 we are, 1 is the real numbers formula 2 is the uh, Poisson's formula, 3 is the Cursor's formula, right? So, all of these 3 we know. Now, from there, I want to find out what the inhomogeneous Cauchy problem, uh, I mean, can we solve that, yeah? So, uh, so this is the problem. Uh, let's call this uh, 4. So, this is like Rn, let's say, cross um, t equals to 0, okay? So, n can be here, let's say n can be any number n. So, n can be 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever, yeah? Uh, okay, we are assuming that we know how to solve the homogeneous problem and from there uh, we will do this thing. Yeah, this will work for anything. Okay, so let us do that. You remember in heat what we did for this kind of problem, we used Duhamel's principle. Here also we are going to do something like that. So before doing that, let us see something uh, superposition. Okay, see the equation the DLMBTN of u equals to f uh, is a linear equation right is a linear equation of course it's a linear equation and the same holds for heat equation also it's a linear equation right okay so you can actually separate out two parts so basically you can write u of xt to be u1 of xt plus u2 of xt clear okay where where uh, the DLM partition of u1 of xt that is given by uh, that is 0 okay with u at the point x0 is f of uh, g of x let's say g of x ut at the point x0 is h of x okay and the DLM partition of u1 of xt that is going to be capital F, okay, u at the point x0, u1, uh, sorry, this is u2, huh? u2 at the point x0, this is going to be 0 and u, okay, u2 with respect to t, yeah? I think this is fine, yeah? okay, x0, this is equals to 0, okay, I do not want to write it u2t, yeah, that will get confusing, so basically ut with respect to t at the point x0 that is going to be 0 so you see if u1 and u2 solve these two problem then you if you add so this is u1 this is u1 you know with respect to t uh, let me write it properly so basically u1 with respect to t okay and here also u1 so you see if u1 and u2 does u1 solves this problem and u2 solves this problem if you add those two up because of the linearity, the DLM partition of u1 plus u2 is f and u1 at the point x0 is g, u, uh, sorry, u, so basically if you add it up, uh, what will happen? The DLM partition of u is 0, okay, the u is equals to g because g plus 0 is 0, so at x equals to 0 and ut, that is going to be h, right, okay, so we broke it up into two parts. Now, what about the first part? So, let us say this is your uh, 5 and that is your 6. Okay. So, the 5 part you already know. This is a homogeneous problem. Okay. So, the, this is a homogeneous wave equation. Okay. We know what to do with this. Plus, this is a inhomogeneous wave equation. Inhomogeneous wave equation but one at least some good news is it has a homogeneous boundary condition clear okay so uh, what we are going to do is let's say that uh, for now let's just assume g and h is zero yeah i mean that's not a issue here okay so assume of course g and h is zero you know i mean you can actually solve the problem right yes so let let I will, I will uh, denote it like this w okay wave because of the wave equation w f of x t s you remember that s yeah 
the solution of the homogeneous problem homogeneous problem now i am using duhamel you remember duhamel what did, what did duhamel do duhamel uh, it said that if you have a inhomogeneous problem okay you solve a bunch of homogeneous problems and then sum it up right so integrating so that is what we are doing here so we wrote a so let w f capital f of x t s be the solution of the homogeneous problem which homogeneous problem the d alembertian of w is zero and w at the you know t equals to s that level this is zero and w t with respect to w with respect to time variable t at t equals to s that is given by capital f of x s okay so basically the source term capital f in this is getting converted to the boundary here f okay so we are basically saying on the boundary f is s so for s equals to t equals to s actually for every level t equals to s this is given by capital f okay so in n dimension let's do it in n dimension then we can go from there right okay so you see for n equals to 3 we have this cursor formula yes for n equals to 3 we have this cursor formula so we are going to use this formula you know we are going to use this formula and uh, you know we are going to find what the uh, solution is so so now what we are going to do is uh, you see this, this we know how to solve yes i mean whatever the dimension is let's say yeah so this is let's say in rn cross 0 infinity right do hammer's principle says that if you write let's say u of xt okay this is equals to so I am defining it 0 to t w f of x t s d s okay if you define it like this okay then so let's this is for x in r n and t rather than equals 0 if you define it like this then it says that this is the solution solution of let me write it here u t t so basically the dialembertian of u equals to capital f okay in r n cross 0 infinity and d u is equals to 0 u t this is equals to 0 on r n cross t equals to 0 right so is it clear to the problem 4 actually to the problem 4 okay so see this 5 i know wh how to solve 5 right i mean for now at least for n equals to 1 2 3 i know how to, how to solve 5 and the pro problem 6 only is a huge problem for us so to, to deal with that what we are doing is we are saying that let's say we know what is the solution of this homogeneous problem okay of course we know what is the solution of this homogeneous problem at least for n equals to 1 2 3 for now okay what does duhamel principle says that if you write u to be the integral of wf right so you solve the homogeneous problem at the level t equals to s and then integrate between 0 and t if you define u like that then that u will solve this problem right which problem is it it is basically the sixth problem problem clear if you know what 5 is, you, you know what 6 is, if you add it up, then you have your solution, clear? Okay, so let me write down, uh, you know, the theorem, okay, uh, and then we'll go from there. So, theorem 4, theorem for uh, non-homogeneous problem. So, basically, let's, let's write it like uh, the non-homogeneous wave equation, genius wave equation. wave equation okay so assume assume n is greater than equal to and f 
belongs to the uh, you know that uh, sorry capital F huh? capital F capital F belongs to C the box function of n by 2 plus 1 okay rn cross 0 infinity open okay and define u as uh, I, as, as this one huh? how do I put it uh, mm, how do I put it maybe uh, let, star I already used somewhere right star I have used for the uh, Poisson formula so let's let's call it uh, double star maybe huh? double star so basically let's see u is defined by u defined as double star okay then you have the following number a u is in c2 of rn cross 0 infinity okay please realize this thing i am taking a liberty of assuming that i know that how to solve the homogeneous problem for every dimension i don't know that up till now i did only for n equals to 2 and 3 but i am assuming that we know exactly the same sort of thing will happen but it will be more complicated okay we'll do it next week so but i am assuming that for now so once you do that you see um, i mean uh, we can do all of this whatever i am doing here okay so u is in c2 okay so basically if you take capital f to be in c the box of n by 2 so basically let's say n equals to 3 yeah so in that case it is 2 c2 of rn cross 0 infinity so uh, then u is also in c2 and moreover the um, the dlm but n of u this is going to be uh, capital f yeah in rn cross 0 infinity okay and c is limit okay see boundary condition is given like this xt going to x not 0 okay and x is in rn t positive u of xt that is 0 okay limit again same thing xt going to x not 0 x is in rn t positive u t of x t that is 0 ok for each point x not in R n clear ok so this is the theorem which I have so basically what it is saying is if you have if you want a non homogeneous wave equation if you want a solution of non homogeneous wave equation that is given by this u what is and what is this u u is given by this the integral of wf where wf solves this problem okay and what is the total solution u of xt will look like u1 plus u2 where u1 is the solution of the homogeneous part with g and h and u2 is the solution uh, of the inhomogeneous part with zero uh, initial condition clear okay so um, uh, so this theorem says this that one that if you take capital f to be in c2 u is also in c2 u solves that uh, i mean uh, the he, wave equation in you know, non homogeneous or inhomogeneous wave equation and on the boundary u tends towards zero okay so let's look at the proof of this thing proof see uh, first of all if n is odd n is odd okay then n by 2 plus 1 the box function of n by 2 plus 1 that is given by of course n plus 1 by 2 i mean yeah that's fine okay so therefore what do you have is if c uh, you know sorry if capital f so the therefore if capital f is in c 2 of mm, c n plus 1 okay uh, by 2 okay n is what capital f is in c n plus 1 by 2 so basically let's say n equals to 3 okay so in that case it will be 2 so capital f is in c2 that let's say c2 okay of of course r n cross close 0 infinity open okay then that uh, the function which you got i mean w w of f see 
W f of x t s if capital F is in C2 okay this problem uh, is in C2 that that is clear right W f is in C2 why you see W f is a homogeneous problem right I mean let's say n equals to 3 right I took n equals to 3 from Karsov's formula um, I mean if you, if you look at so uh, this is a small exercise okay check using Karsov's formula for n equals to 3 okay this one whatever I am writing that if f is in c2 n equals to 3 f is in c2 then the w f which you are getting this we will get for n equals to 3 you will get using Karsov's formula right okay the w f which you are getting uh, the, this w f is the solution of this problem right w f is the solution of this problem okay for each s positive is in c2 then capital w f x t s okay that is in c2 of rn cross uh, s infinity okay for each s greater than equal to 0 clear and hence and hence w uh, u which is defined by the integral of wf you see u is defined by the integral of wf between 0 and t right okay so if wf is in c2 u is of course at least at least, uh, actually c3 but i mean for now you can of course take it to be c2 that's not a issue right okay so hence u is in c2 of rn cross uh, 0 infinity 0 infinity clear uh, if n is even then n by 2 plus 1 is n plus 2 by 2 clear okay and again the same thing in the for the Karsha here it will be a Karsha formula for n equals to 3 you can take the pause over here and you can show that if n is uh, even then uh, n plus 2 by 1 the box of n plus 2 plus 1 is n plus 2 by 2 and since capital F is in C n plus 2 by 2 okay so let's say n equals to 2 this is also C f is in C2 right so if f is in c2 that will imply u is in c2 the same sort of logic will work right okay so u is in c2 of rn cross 0 infinity open clear okay say exact same side sort of logic i mean you can think of this using think of this using pause how this using pause formula clear Okay, so this you guys have to do it yourself. I mean, there is nothing much to do, uh, yes. So please uh, check this part. Right now, so this is the first part gone. A. Now, what about B? B is not a very difficult thing to check. You see, U T of X T. If you take that is essentially uh, W F of X T T S equals to T. Okay, plus zero to T W f with respect to t at x t s ds right yes do you think this is true of course this is why i am just doing uh, i mean differentiation with respect to the integral sign yes so this is the boundary term this is 0 to t this term is there yeah and then this is given by 0 to t w f with respect to t at the point x t s d s okay right now and what is u t t of x comma t that is given by q t again i am just taking the derivative again i mean again i am doing the uh, derivative i mean you know differentiation on the integral sign okay okay 
I, I did explain last this is zero right this is zero so basically this becomes this and then uh, now i want to write utt then i have to differentiate this thing with respect to time okay the so same kind of thing will happen ut of um, sorry wf with respect to t of x t t plus 0 to t wf with respect to tt of x t s ds okay so that is equals to f of x t capital f of x t okay plus let me write it properly so i think this is clear eh? i'm just now i'm not doing anything but i'm just doing this thing differentiation differentiation under the sign of integration clear i'm just using this thing in both the cases yes in both the cases i'm just using this part that's all okay uh, so uh, yeah where am i uh, utt is this right okay so yeah this is fine this is fine okay and uh, now you see ut of x t t yes if you remember what is uh, so w sorry this thing w f t with x t t yeah for s equals to t w f x see w f is 0 for s equals to t if you see uh, you see w f is a solution right okay so w f w is 0 okay and w t is capital f okay so that is why this w f is 0 i do not have that w f is capital f so this is capital f of x t plus 0 to t w f okay with respect to so this is not with respect to f this is just a notation w f huh? this is basically uh, the solution w with the uh, i mean uh, when we have the initial condition as f capital f okay with respect to t t at the point x t s d s clear okay right also laplacian of u x t okay what is it this is nothing but 0 to t laplacian of u x t s d s right why because you know this integral is with respect to time variable and i am doing the differentiation with respect to the special variable so i can just take it inside and this is what i have and that again see here sorry see u uh, u is this right so if you take laplacian of u it becomes laplacian of w f right laplacian of w f is basically this is what the real amphetamine of w is uh, w t t minus laplacian of w right so laplacian of w f minus uh, w f with respect to double derivative t t minus the laplacian of w f that is zero right that is given to us so here you see this i have to change it a little bit so this will be laplacian of w f at the point x t s clear okay so this is given by 0 to t and since w f uh, so, uh, so the you know dl m but n it is w f with respect to t t okay x t s t s clear okay now you see if you take u t t minus this so basically you have f of x t okay so I am not writing that thing. I, I, I guess this is fine. Yeah. Uh, what about the initial conditions? Uh, I mean, initial conditions also there is nothing special. Of course, you can see that. Uh, I mean, if you define W, uh, I mean capital U like W F, since W on the boundary, I mean initially it is zero. Okay. So um, you can actually have this this the C the C part, this and this. So U is defined by u is defined by integral of w f from 0 to t okay so at t equals to 0 you do understand as t approaches 0 this integral becomes from 0 to 0 this which is 0 and the same holds for uh, u t also okay so u t is given by you see what is u t u t is given by this okay now as t tends to 0 you do realize that this is going to 0 
right so there is nothing else to prove i'm just uh, leaving it to you so please do it yourself okay right now i have another small details to work out okay so this is for n equal greater than equal to i hope this is fine see this this thing what does it do you have using this uh, theorem we solved what four is yeah five we already know via karshop and poso now if you want to find a u what you do you just take those two and put it together okay it is going to be a very extremely big and complicated formula but you have uh, the exact equation right clear so that is there now so this is for n greater than equal to if you remember yeah now let us do it for n equals to 1 okay for the case n equals to 1 n equals to 1 okay so what does dl members formula gives us you see uh, in this case uh, u of um, i mean if you use dl but here okay u so okay one uh, small thing i need to, uh, to do here you see the equation here it should look like uh, this no utt minus uxx equals to small f so this is the problem i need to solve in one dimension yes r cross zero infinity and u equals to zero ut is equals to zero uh, on r cross t equals to zero okay so you see the exact the Duhamel's principle everything works to, uh, fine huh? so from Duhamel's principle of course uh, from dlm but first of all yeah so you realize that uh, if i want to solve this problem what um, what do i do i first of all uh, find out uh, solution of this so let's say i mean you remember uh, i don't know what did i put it here i mean what is the last number there are so many numbers i'm huh? sorry this is uh, this is five five is the last one eh? or six i i thought i put somewhere six no so anyways uh, let, let's call it as the problem p that will be better yeah so for let's say i want to solve this problem p huh? now you you know that the exact same thing which we did for uh, this case uh, you know this this case the problem p can be uh, divided into two parts four and five exactly like this exactly like this we can do it yes or no yeah you can do this part yeah once you do this part so exactly what am i trying to say let me let me write it properly and then maybe uh, it will be a little less confusion okay so let's say this is g that is h yeah if i have to solve this problem p i can break it up into two parts okay so this problem can be broken up into two parts one part is this u so dlm but n of u is equals to f okay u is equals to zero ut is equals to zero one part okay the second part is dlm but n of u is equals to zero u is equals to uh, g and ut is equals to h clear okay i can do this now you see um, this problem of course by dl number formula i know so let's call it uh, p1 and let's call this thing as p2 okay now you see p1 i p2 i know how to solve it okay so we know we know how to solve p2 okay using dl inverts using d l inverts formula my only concern is how do i find p1 okay now you see what i am going to do is p2 we can just write it i mean you just think of this as at the point x s right so you know i, I will use do hammer's principle essentially but uh, i mean uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to write it like this so basically let me do it here u of x t comma s u uh, basically this is the wf huh? that if you want to write it from dl inverse from dl inverse yeah so essentially this problem for the time t equals to s you understand 
P240 equals to S if you want to write. So basically if I want to solve this P1, so I can solve P240 equals to S, right? Yeah, and then go from there. So I'm going to do something like this. I hope the, you, you are understanding what I'm trying to say. See, I, I want to solve this problem. So basically, uh, WF, that, uh, you know, the WF solution, what we did, that, that problem I want to solve. So essentially this problem I want to solve, but for one dimension, yeah. This problem I want to solve for one dimension. Is this clear? Okay. And then, um, I mean, how, what is the solution of that problem? I can use D. Lambert formula. Is this clear? Okay. So let me use the D. Lambert formula. So let me write down this problem. Uh, let's call this problem as the um, MP. Okay. So let's say that, uh, what am I doing here? Yeah. So U of XTS, this is the solution for mp for n equals to 1 so mp n equals to 1 n equals to you take n equals to 1 and uh, u is the solution of mp for n equals to 1 and how does it look like by d'alembert formula it will look like x minus t plus s x plus t minus s f of y s d y is this clear okay so where u of x T comma S is the solution of MP of MP okay for n equals to 1 clear okay I wanted to write that equation that is why it was a little confusing so there are you do understand that each each dimension has to be dealt to it differently that is why there is a little confusion but I hope this is fine yes now if you do that therefore by Duhamel so this is by D'Alembert yeah D'Alembert yeah now by Duhamel by Duhamel Duhamel's principle what do you have principle we have that u of xt you can write it as half t s will lie between 0 and t right and then you have y riding between x minus s plus s x plus t minus s f of y s dy ds so basically this thing and after that you take s to from 0 to uh, t that is do hammer's principle that that is your u of xt if you define u of xt like this then i mean exactly the same thing which we did you can show that this is actually the solution of the problem so basically you can write it in a nice way like this u of xt is half 0 to t okay x minus s to x plus s f of y t minus s dy ds this is for x in r and t positive so this is just a change of variable so is this clear what i am saying see uh, i will solve the problem mp for n equals to 1 yes let us assume that the solution is given by u for the time t equals to s and that is given by this. How do I know that? That is D'Alembert's formula. Yes, I use D'Alembert's formula for the level t equals to s. Okay, once I have that, then you use the Duhamel's principle to get what u of xt is. Clear? Once you have it, u of xt, I mean, you can of course pro prove that this u solves the problem. Yeah, and this I am not doing because this will be again the same sort of thing. Yeah, nothing changes. The same sort of calculation will work, whatever we did for higher dimension just a little easy and then what happens is you just use a change of variable and write it like this so this is the formula which you have for one dimension okay uh, i mean this is the solution for one dimensional equation mm, this this thing p1 this is the formula for p1 okay so so yeah this is the formula for p1 here okay uh, so with this we are going to end this lecture